My name is Brendan Scott and I'm the Soaring in Residence at Cavan County Council. What became Cavan's UDC, uh, the Urban District Council, was created in 1610 when Cavan Town's Charter created the first corporation of the borough of Cavan that year under the Ulster Plantation Project, uh, the first town uh, in Ulster to do so. Uh, Belturbet followed with its own corporation three years later in 1613. And these lasted in various forms, with the UDCs coming into being in 1899 until they were finally dissolved in 2014. But a reading of their minutes, uh, which for Belturbet and Cavan UDCs are held in the Johnson Central Library in Cavan, along with other sources, can reveal a lot about the tumultuous times these councils witnessed and commented upon. And it is primarily their actions and comments from the late 1910s through to the early 1920s uh, that I'll be uh, discussing today. Uh, the Cavan UDC, for example, uh, was very active in commenting upon uh, national events. And on the 4th of April, 1920, they recorded its uh, protest against what they called continued brutal incarceration of the Irish prisoners in places like Bally Kinlar, County Down, and demanded their immediate release in the name of humanity, quite strongly worded. Uh, prisoner rights were obviously high on many people's thoughts uh, around this time, and especially in Belturbet UDC, as in March 1921, uh, the town clerk there, a guy called Edward O'Reilly, was arrested and sent to Crumlin Road Jail in Belfast. Uh, a vote of sympathy uh, was made to his wife and children uh, by Belturbet UDC, and a temporary clerk was installed until such time as O'Reilly was released. This didn't seem to take too long, and after only a few meetings, O'Reilly was back in situ again, taking uh, the Belturbet UDC minutes. And the nationalist tendencies of Belturbet UDC could be seen in, in their part in a controversy which engulfed uh, the UDC and the RIC, the Royal Irish Constabulary, uh, in October 1919. Uh, West Cavan volunteers uh, entered the town hall in Belturbet, which was where uh, the, uh, the UDC met. And that picture there, you can just see at the very end uh, up at the diamond, is the original town hall, or the one from the early 20th century at least. Uh, it was rebuilt in the late 1920s. Uh, but West Cavan volunteers went in there in October 1919, um, and the daubed tar across the royal coat of arms which were displayed in uh, the council chamber and petty sessions were held in that chamber as well and as well as destroying the coat of arms the volunteers then painted a skull inscribed with the letters r.i.p on it with an arrow pointing to where the coat of arms had been so the uh, uh, what they're saying is quite clear uh, and to go along with the skull they also painted a tricolor with the letters i.r which stood for irish republic uh, beside it. Um, Belturbet UDC, the membership of Belturbet UDC would have mostly been sympathetic uh, to these, uh, to, to, the, to those uh, thoughts, and uh, they made no attempt to take down a tricolour, uh, which had been hoisted onto the clock tower uh, at the front of the town hall. Uh, and at the UDC meeting uh, the following month, the flag was still in situ, and the town hall had not been locked up. They'd been ordered by the RIC to lock up the town hall because they said that it was being used for some sort of illegal practices, but they refused to do that. Um, on the 6th of October 1919, the clerk informed uh, the UDC the Sergeant Smith of the RIC uh, had called uh, to request that the flag be removed, and the clerk, as we met a moment ago, Edward O'Reilly, told uh, uh, the sergeant that he didn't have the authority uh, to do that. So the RIC then followed up with a letter to the UDC uh, making the same request and also asking for the keys of the town hall. Uh, but again, no order to do these things was made by the UDC and they, they refused to do so. Um, the UDC uh, said that, and this is a quote, they did not put the flag there and others could take it down if they wished, but the council would not do their work for them. Uh, and as one of the councillors said, uh, we can't get up to take it down. So uh, the British authorities took Belturbet UDC at their word 
and they took control of the town hall, chaining the door shut and removing the offending tricolour themselves, which must have caused a lot, a lot of consternation and uh, anger, uh, particularly among the UDC uh, about this. Uh, now, trouble continued uh, in the town, uh, and this is is, uh, is uh, a part of minutes. Uh, from, from a meeting in April 1920, and you can see there on the side there, it's talking about the military barracks. Uh, on the 26th of April 1920, the UDC received an application for compensation of £200 for damage which had been done to the military barracks, which was where Morrissey Park is now, uh, on the night or morning of the 17th into the 18th of April. Uh, an order was made to mark that the letter had been read, but no more. So they were not going to even respond. The UDC were not going to respond to this. Um, this is followed up with another letter from the 17th of May from a solicitor in Calvin uh, representing the Crown to notify Baltorba UDC that he will be making an application at the next quarterly sessions in Calvin for compensation of £200 for the burning of the uh, Baltorba barracks. And again, that had the same outcome. The letter was to be marked red, but no further action taken. Uh, so you can sort of see how uh, there's a kind of a, a nationalist uh, sympathy across that UD, that particular UDC anyway, and uh, how you can sort of see how they're at cross purposes uh, with each other uh, at this point, which was in the middle of the War of Independence, so not terribly surprising, I suppose. Um, the UDCs often pass resolutions uh, to sympathise with the deaths of various high-profile nationalists and also to condemn aggression towards such people. We saw there a minute ago how Calvin UDC uh, was complaining about prisoner rights and things like that, and how Baltorba UDC had protested the arrest of their town clerk and so on. Uh, and on the 7th of August, 1916, so slightly earlier, Calvin UDC uh, uh, made a resolution uh, that they would ask the British government not to execute Roger Casement uh, as too much, and this is a quote, too much Irish blood has been shed already. Uh, they followed that up with uh, another resolution uh, which stated that, and again, this is a quote, uh, that the council condemned the action of the government in carrying out the death sentence on Sir Roger Casement. And uh, they said that the government should have allowed uh, the case to have been heard in the House of Lords. In November 1920, uh, Beltorba UDC protested uh, the, the execution of Kevin Barry, and they sent their sympathies to uh, his mother, calling Barry, and again, this is a quote, a brave and noble son who gave up his life for his country. Uh, Calvin UDC also declared uh, a protest against the imprisonment in the USA of James Larkin, uh, the Irish Labour leader uh, who had been arrested on charges of criminal anarchy connected to his links with communism. And they demanded his release, which was a position which was uh, followed up by a similar a, a, a request or demand by Bill Turbot UDC as well. Uh, this wasn't the first time the Cavan's UDCs had commented on the deaths of prominent uh, Irish nationalists. Uh, Terence McCartan, who was the Lord Mayor of Cork, uh, was uh, murdered by the RIC on the 20th of March 1920, an incident which gained international notoriety. Uh, on the 3rd of May 1920, Cavan UDC tendered their sympathy to McCartan's uh, widow uh, on the cruel murder of her husband, which is what they, they said, <clears throat> excuse me, and they stated, and again, this is a quote, they stated that the council's protest be recorded against the continued brutal incarcerations of the Irish prisoners and that their immediate release be demanded in the name of humanity. His successor, uh, Terence McCartan's successor, who was Terence McSweeney, uh, he was arrested in August 1920, and he was imprisoned in Brixton Prison, uh, where he was sentenced to serve two years. Uh, McSweeney went on hunger strike, and he eventually died on the 25th of October 1920. Uh, on the 6th of September 1920, so just before uh, uh, his death, Beltorba UDC made a resolution criticising McSweeney's treatment and the treatment of his colleagues. And a special meeting was held by Beltorba UDC to express their sympathies to McSweeney's wife uh, when he died uh, in late October. In Coothill, uh, following uh, McSweeney's death, uh, some tension was evident there as well. And uh, union shops uh, refused to close 
during a day of remembrance uh, for McSweeney. And also volunteers uh, from Ashfield came to the town to protect these shops and to ensure that they stayed open. And there was also a sign of trouble when one of the volunteers who was armed with a gun took a Republican flag from a young girl who was marching in procession to the church where mass was being uh, celebrated for McSweeney. Uh, trouble was averted when the volunteer returned the flag, but it was a close call. And that's reported in the anglo Celt. Uh, the recognition of Dáil Éireann and the arbitration courts were also recorded in the various UDC minutes. But on the 5th of July, 1920, Cavan UDC acknowledged the authority of Dáil Éireann as the duly elected government of the Irish people, and they undertook uh, to give effect to all decrees duly promulgated by the said Dáil Éireann. Uh, on the 10th of September, 1920, Cavan UDC again made a similar resolution recognising the authority of Dáil Éireann as the only elected government of the Irish people. And on the 4th of October, 1920, Belturba UDC unanimously agreed to recognise no government but Dáil Éireann. Uh, in December 1920, uh, when the town clerk of the Turbot, Edward Riley, was about to read some circulars from the local government board, uh, the chairman stated that, and this is a quote, they had nothing to do with them. So the, these uh, uh, circulars were passed over and not read at all. Uh, so, so they were saying that we're bypassing English government uh, and uh, we're, we're not going to read these things out that are being sent out by the by, uh, uh, British government. Uh, and we're having nothing to do with those now. Um, in September 1920, Cavan UDC congratulated one of the number, a guy called John Muldoon, uh, who refused to signal through a train which was coming from Cavan, uh, which was coming from Dublin through Cavan, which carried armed Crown forces. <clears throat> so again, you can see, uh, I, I suppose, the... Uh, the anti-British sentiment uh, the, that was evident in these uh, UDCs. Uh, Belturba UDC also gave assurances uh, that they would refuse to go into any courts to prosecute or defend cases bar the parish arbitration courts, which had been set up to bypass uh, the British uh, law system, the British court system. Uh, indeed, one of the Belturba councillors, a guy called uh, J.H. Quinn, noted in November 1921 that, and this is a quote, he did not see why the town hall should not be used for arbitration courts. He happened to be present at such a court a short time ago and never saw fairer decisions and justice all around. Um, there have been arguments about Torbett uh, UDC meetings in December 1920 and July 1921 over what court to present people to, the British court or the arbitration courts. And could Hills Parish Courts uh, were heard before at least one member of its UDC, a, a person called a P. Hannigan. Uh, now, interestingly, uh, the Johnson Central Library recently um, received uh, a minute book from one of these arbitration courts uh, from Drum Lane, and uh, I'll be uh, doing something on that uh, in, in the next while, so keep an eye out for that too. Uh, now, the Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed on the 6th of December 1921, which granted 26 Irish counties dominion status as a free state, but also ensured the six counties from Ulster remained within the United Kingdoms of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Uh, partition had been on the cards for a while up, up to this point, and on the 1st of March 1920, Cavan UDC noted the receipt of a resolution from Monaghan County Council opposing partition. And on the 14th of December 1921, during dull debates uh, over the treaty, Calvin TD Sean Milroy made an important speech. And siding with his fellow Calvin TD Arthur Griffin, Milroy uh, declared that it is the most extraordinary thing that Ireland should be thrown into the vortex of a great cleavage and on the brink of war for the trifling, small, pettifogging points that have been brought up today. I think, members of the Dáil, that we must realise that we are here with a very grave issue before us, one that affects the future of Ireland for generations to come. As we came in today, we heard certain members of the public shouting up the Republic. Ever since this controversy arose, the impression on the public mind has been that one section of the cabinet has been standing for the Republic and the other standing for the treaty. That is not the issue, and this decision will not be allowed to be decided upon that issue. And during the debates, pro-treaty pro speakers challenged Republican assertions 
that the treaty represented a surrender and that the delegation overreached in concluding the treaty without referring back to Dublin. And Milroy later stated, uh, again, that's Milroy there, uh, whether you accept or reject our definition of this treaty, you cannot question the fact that it does give the Irish nation great, tremendous national powers. That is the difference between the Act of Union and this treaty. The Act of Union from 1800 took away from the Irish people their right, such as they had, to direct, mould and control their own land. This treaty brings back to Ireland these powers. Now, Calvin's UDCs <clears throat> excuse me, all supported the treaty as did most, if not all, of the Sinn Féin clubs. And Frank Dolphin uh, of Ballyconnell Sinn Féin wrote in his memoir, uh, which was published uh, in a book that I edited last year, uh, which is available through uh, the library system. Uh, he wrote that the Ballyconnell Sinn Féin club urged uh, Peter Paul Galligan, uh, one of the Calvin TDs, to accept the treaty, which he did, uh, although Galligan actually voted for De Valera to remain as president. Uh, even after that, uh, and he shortly afterwards left politics entirely, which shows that I think that he had a bit of a, he, he was on the fence about this. Uh, in in Cavan, uh, as elsewhere, pro-treaty sentiment was quick to assert itself among the Catholic clergy, and with enough adherence emerging in early January to carry majorities on public bodies and in the local Sinn Féin organisation, uh, uh, which especially in East Cavan had come out heavily in favour of the treaty. Now, as a result, uh, Galligan, who I mentioned a moment ago, was sent a flurry of telegrams and letters from Calvin's Sinn Féin clubs, including, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, the one from Ballyconnell, uh, from local councils and other bodies urging acceptance of the treaty. Uh, and on the 28th of December, Calvin UDC uh, passed the following resolution. Uh, they said uh, that this meeting of the Calvin Urban District Council specially convened a desire to place on record as high appreciation of the terms of the treaty entered into by our nation's plenipotentiaries. They were the people who had, uh, who had um, uh, uh, negotiated the treaty. And whilst recognising the great services rendered by the members of Andal who were in opposition, we unanimously request them for the sake of our dear country to bury their differences and stand with Arthur Griffith and Sean McKeown for the ratification of the treaty. Uh, Sean McKeown, uh, or Sean McGowan, uh, was the Longford IRA leader and TD uh, who was pro-treaty. He'd been involved in the attack, for example, on, on the RIC barracks in Arva. Uh, Coothill UDC passed a similar resolution as well. Uh, while a public meeting in Coothill on the 22nd of December 1921 was told that all organisations and representatives of public opinion assembled here in public meeting strongly demand ratification of the treaty. Furthermore, it was reported that a representative meeting of the women electors of Coothill and District also supported the peace settlement and believed it would be a national disaster to have it thrown out. According to the Irish Independent, on the 31st of December 1921, Coothill UDC uh, this, uh, stated they unanimously approved the terms of the treaty and called upon Messrs Arthur Griffith and Sean Milroy uh, to use all their en energy to influence the doll to unanimously support ratification. And in doing so, you will be obeying the mandate of the Irish people and thus securing the welfare and freedom of the Irish people. <clears throat> uh, a letter from, Ka from Coothill UDC to Sean Milroy read that, no, that not only did Coothill UDC accept the treaty, but so did what they said, all of East Cavan. They also noted their hope, as did uh, the Turbot UDC, that a split would be avoided. Uh, which Ireland's enemies anxiously expect, uh, which the, the use that phrase in the letter. And Coothill UDC noted again, it is a quote, never was unity more needed. United we stand, divided we fall. Now on the 30th of December 1921, Beltorbet uh, UDC, in a kind of classic example of having their cake and wanting to eat it as well, uh, passed a resolution which stated that they approved of the terms of the treaty, but with partition looming, they also called upon President de Valera to do everything in his power to preserve unity and prevent the appalling consequences of a divided country. At the County Council meeting, the Calvin County Council meeting, H. for Simon's uh, motion for the treaty declared that the Calvin County Council, uh, whilst feeling that the present treaty does not realise all the hopes of the Irish people, believed that it safeguarded the interests of the Gaelic nation. And the alternative is such that 
acting in the name of our constituencies, we now formally pronounce in his favour. So even though they have some misgivings, <clears throat> uh, their opinion is it's better than nothing and it's a step on in the right direction. So we're going to uh, 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 validate this. And the text went on to endorse the public statements of Griffith and, and Milroy and called on Galligan to vote for ratification. Uh, for Simons made the case for the treaty, stating that he accepted it not as a final settlement uh, and saw no difficulty in transferring his allegiance from the hoped for republic instead to the free state. Uh, councillors Lynch and O'Reilly uh, made similar remarks with the former stating that he did not see how they could do anything but support ratification. And the latter uh, remarking that while he had sworn an oath to the Republic, he endorsed the treaty in the belief that it was bringing the day nearer. So they felt, they, they recognised this is not ideal, but it's getting us along the way. Uh, a Republican counter Uh, a Republican counter motion by Councillor Boylan was more simply stated that as a Republican representatives, we do not approve of the treaty. When asked if he wanted to make a speech, Boylan replied that the resolution speaks for itself. We were elected as Republicans. That's all. So quite succinct and to the point. Uh, 17 councillors voted for the treaty and only two voted against. In Cavan, as we can see there, uh, public opinion was generally pro-treaty, although the Farmers Union uh, uh, were against it, and it was ratified, the treaty was ratified on the 7th of January 1922. And this uh, is um, a, a telegram coming from Dublin uh, to Ballyconnell to Frank Dolphin, and this is part of the wonderful, wonderful collection of material uh, uh, from Frank Dolphin's archive, which has been uh, donated to uh, Johnson Central Library in Cavan uh, by his son uh, Frankie Dolphin and this uh, tells about how uh, the treaty has been ratified by 64 to 57 votes. It was quite tight um, but news of its ratification was greeted with relief in Cavan uh, and the self reported that tricolours had been raised in various parts of the county. By St Patrick's Day in 1922 the last of the Crown forces uh, had left Cavan and there was an election held in June 1922, which saw another uh, uh, huge success uh, for Arthur Griffith, who was a TD for Cavan. Uh, he received 13,101 first preference votes, and his large surplus was enough to bring in his two running mates, uh, Walter Cole and uh, Milroy, meaning that all TDs elected in Cavan were pro-treaty. But tragedy soon struck, as we know, when Arthur Griffith died suddenly and unexpectedly on the 12th of August, uh, 1922. And on the 15th of August, uh, Cavan UDC ordered that all shops closed until 2 p.m. on the day of Arthur Griffith's funeral. Uh, Cavan's UDC recorded its sympathies on the death of Griffith, whom they described as one of Ireland's most illustrious sons. They recognised that his death was hastened by the stress of civil war, uh, which they termed the present unfortunate conflict amongst Irishmen. That's an understatement if you ever heard one. Uh, they went on to hope and this is a quote, uh, that the opposing parties would shake hands over his grave and thus perpetuate the memory of one who has given his life and worked unselfishly to make Ireland mistress of our own destinies, which is a nicely phrased uh, piece there. Beltorbis businesses were also to remain shut uh, on the day of Griffith's funeral as they proposed their sympathies to Griffith's widow on the death of what they call of her illustrious husband. Interestingly, neither UDC seems to have commented on Collins' death, uh, which occurred only 10 days after that. The final point for discussion in, in this uh, short talk uh, are the rural district councils, which were established under the Local Government of Ireland Act in 1898. But in the early years of county councils, much of the routine business was transacted through the rural district councils. The Local Government Act of uh, 1925 abolished uh, the rural district councils, the RDCs, and their duties were instead transferred uh, to the county councils. There were RDCs uh, covering the districts of Bailieborough, Bomboy, Castle Rahan, Caventown, uh, Coothill and Mullahorn. And I mention these because there's an interesting note in the Bomboy RDC minutes, which are also held in in the Johnson Central Library. Uh, and, and there's a note in, in the Bomboy Minutes from the 6th of December, 1920. And it says, uh, the clerk reported that on the night of the 30th Ultimo, uh, so the 30th of November, at 7 o'clock p.m., 
four masked men entered his office and demanded him to deliver up to them minute books of the union and rural district and that he had no choice to comply with their request. He requested uh, the men to return the books, but got no assurance to that effect, nor were the minute books since returned. Now, they were returned because they're now up in the library in, in Cavan. But it just shows you how, how these things were seen as being important uh, at the time. Uh, it's just so I suppose to conclude, uh, the UDC minutes for Cavan and Bilturbal, as I say, which are held in the library in Cavan, are packed with fascinating detail, which deals with the day-to-day -day life of these towns and their inhabitants. I've only been looking at, uh, at stuff that, that kind of uh, applies to the decade of centenaries. There's so much stuff in there about housing, sanitation, employment, uh, uh, all manner of things are in there. And, and, and there's some great things, like, for example, there, there's one, one uh, comment in Belturbet UDC uh, that they're offered uh, by the British War Office in 1919, a German machine gun and some stuff to go along with it. And, and it, they're offered this uh, by uh, uh, they offered this to Belturba UDC, and and one person says yes, uh, we should be we should accept this, uh, but there's no seconder for it. So Belturba UDC passes up this opportunity to get a machine gun. Uh, you sort of wonder what would they do with it? You know, uh, I I don't know. Uh, so, but there's just little things like that 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 come up in 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 there and in Belturba UDC minutes as well. Uh, there's talk of changing the street names, which happen, which is talked about in, in the uh, Cavan ones as well. So, for example, in Biltorbet, they want to change the name of the Diamond uh, to Owen Row Square. Uh, they want to change uh, Holborn Hill to O'Rahilly Street. Uh, the only one that seems to really stick is they want to change Butler Street to Main Street, and that one seems to stick. And likewise, in Cavan, uh, they, they propose a lot of changes as well, uh, most of which don't stick. Some of them do. Wesley Street becomes Ash Street and a few things like that, but generally uh, not too much. Uh, and, and they also are, are involved in, in, in the Belfast boycott as well. Um, uh, all, all materials uh, being uh, coming from Belfast uh, are not to be bought. Uh, in in Cavan, and so they say. So on, on the seventh of September night, and that was to do with the ill treatment of Catholics in Belfast at that time. Uh, on the seventh of September, nineteen twenty, and again on the fourth of October that year, a Belfast boycott is ordered by Cavan UDC, stating that any article may be sold to Belfast, but that no article may be bought from Belfast. So they don't mind taking their money, but they're not going to give them any money. Uh, and that stance is mirrored by similar decrees from Belturbet uh, UDC in November 1920. Uh, and then there are other little things that, that pop up as well, like on the 12th of June 1921, Andrew McEntee, who's the chairman of Cavan UDC, reported uh, to the UDC that he had investigated the shooting on the previous Sunday night by the IRA and had received an assurance that such an incident would not occur again, but with the proviso that the searching of motor cars would continue. Uh, and that's all it says. So I thought, well, what's going on? So I went looking through the CELT and found out that there'd been some sort of civic disturbance in the town uh, the, the, uh, on, on that date. And uh, the IRA had uh, fired a few warning shots to kind of calm things down. And they were also searching cars uh, to just, you know, uh, either to harass or um, uh, just to see what people were carrying or whatever keep things kind of calmed down. So so the, the so when the UDC chair goes to the IRA to say, okay, we're not going to shoot anymore, but we are going to keep searching cars just to make sure there's nothing going on that we don't know about. Uh, uh, the, and the UDC minutes don't normally focus on the national picture. I mean, those bits that I've pulled out are a handful of things from, you know, hundreds of of resolutions uh, passed uh, by the UDCs during this period. Uh, but when they do focus on the national picture, they can tell us a lot about the attitudes of the councillors uh, and those whom they represented. And thankfully, these minutes are held safely in the archive of the Johnson Centre Library in Cavan, where they can be studied and examined, hopefully, uh, for generations uh, to come. Uh, and ju just to finish off, if anyone is interested, uh, in, in any of this material, uh, as I say, you can uh, uh, access the minute books uh, for Calvin and Belturba UDC in the Johnson Central Library. Uh, the Anglo-Celt, again, is always so much material in there that's uh, 
gold, really. Uh, there are a few books that I edited uh, over the last 10 years or so, um, which can be got in the library in Calvin as well. And there's also a little booklet uh, that was uh, uh, written by Michael Finnegan, uh, formerly of the museum, uh, who talks about some of, the, uh, some of the things that were happening in Baltorbid at that time as well. Um, so just to finish off, I suppose, my thanks as always uh, to Calvin County Council uh, for their support and especially the library service for everything that they do. And in particular, uh, the county librarian, Emma Clancy, uh, Sinead McCardle and Jonathan Smith. Uh, and thank you all as well for tuning in and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you.